Hey everybody, I'm Catalina and today we are going to be talking about episode 2 of Mission Yozakura Family. I don't know about any of you, but if somebody woke me up the way that Kyoichiro woke up Tayo in the start of this episode, he would be the one who would need to be sleeping with one eye open, because I'd be gunning for him. Yeah, our guy has started his training as a spy, and it is starting without any kind of preamble whatsoever. Kyoichiro still hates his guts, is still pissed off that he ended up getting to exchange the rings with Matsumi, and is still very much against the idea. Fortunately for Tayo, the rules are in place, and Kyoichiro does actually care about the rules, so he isn't trying to kill him anymore, but that isn't going to stop him from making Tayo wish that he was dead, because this wake-up ritual was brutal. And things don't really get a lot easier for Tayo as the episode progresses. We get a really interesting look into how this kid is going to deal with the reality of what's actually happening to him here. Because we see him actually have moments where he has fear and struggle, like when they're in the car traveling together. We see moments where he is fast thinking on his feet when the situation happens where he realizes there's a bomb in the ceiling and he manages to get himself and Matsumi behind a couch. We see situations where he's at an all-time low and he feels really terrible and useless and he questions why Matsumi would actually want to be with him of all people because he isn't confident in his abilities yet. And we also see the thing that makes Tayo so important and so special, which is the reality that when shit hits the fan and he realizes that the bomber that we are actually trying to catch in this week's episode has managed to place a bomb on him, that he would rather throw himself out a window, presumably to his own death, than risk the idea of the explosion hurting Matsumi. It is that heart, that passion, and that loyalty that makes Tayo stand out and that's going to make him become an excellent spy as time progresses, especially given that his mission as a spy is specifically to see to Matsumi's protection. I just thought that was really beautiful and that it was really well done and that it makes him a much more interesting character. They don't go too far in making him whiny and snivelly, but they also don't go too far in making him some kind of superhero from word go because one of the things that's really cool about Mission Yozakura family, as somebody who's watching it as an anime only, I don't have a lot of details on the manga or the source material, is that it's really interesting to see this kid who's going to be going from being a normal person who was in the normal world to being somebody who is now yoinked into this practically other reality because of the situation he's found himself in. And as our eyes and ears, it's going to be good to see that he's going to be gradually acclimating to this rather than becoming some kind of superhero overnight because that would make things much less relatable for the audience. And as what he is in a storytelling sense, Tayo cannot afford to be that. We also get some fantastic information about the world that's going to probably help with a lot of people's issues when it came to anything regarding suspension of disbelief because one of the things I noticed when I was looking at comments and discussions on this show in a bunch of different places is that there were a lot of people who thought a lot of the stuff that was going on was super over the top and that it was taking away from the realism of the series but in this episode it is made abundantly clear that realism is not what we should be going for. To me, it seems like this series is kind of like My Hero Academia, except that instead of 80% of people having superpowers, we have maybe like 2% of the population who have spy abilities or something. Maybe it's more, I'm not really sure. But it seems like it's that kind of situation where there is a subsection of people who have these abilities, but that this whole thing is run as like an underground situation. As I said in my last discussion video about this, somewhat akin to something like Harry Potter. So for the people who are in the know about this, this situation is perfectly normal. And for the average person, I don't know whether it's that there are spy networks that are covering things up, or whether there are segments of the population that are comfortable with things being more abnormal than what we would expect in our version of reality. But either way, we can definitely count on the fact that these people have actual superpowers. This isn't just about gadgets and guns. We also learn that the reproductive structure of these people and of these families is actually really important and it's one of the key reasons that Matsumi requires so much actual protection. 
Matsumi is what is considered the head of the Yozakura family, and as such, she was actually born without any kind of super ability. I wondered in the last episode whether the situation where the accident happened with Kyoichiro was something where she actually ended up losing something or regressing in some way, but no. She is actually, as far as her physicality goes, an absolutely normal person. The other clip of that coin, though, is that in addition to just being a normal person who is the head of the Yozakura family, Matsumi actually counts as their leader. She is actually the one who is in charge. She is not some passive doll that's supposed to be being passed around like someone playing hot potato, cold potato. She is actually an active member of the family who has say, who has responsibilities, and who has a very important role to play. Part of that role, because she was born this way, is actually to find a partner and to reproduce, because one of the reasons that someone is born this way within the family, each generation, is because it is intended to be able to kind of reset the genetics of having these powers and passing them down. By skipping a generation, the level of powers that the next generation that comes out from Matsumi and presumably from Tayo in this situation, will likely have a higher power percentage than what they would have had this not happened, and this is done to ensure that the distinct capabilities of the Yozakura family line are continued in a proper way. But there's way more to Matsumi than whether or not she's going to have lots and lots of babies, or whether she gets to boss people around. I think a lot of people might make the mistake of thinking that Matsumi is sweet and innocent and clueless and tee hee hee, and I don't see that. I actually see, especially after watching this episode, a young woman who definitely has some very grave responsibilities and who has undoubtedly had a very difficult and very double life. I mean, on one hand, she is this person and she has all these responsibilities and she seems very aware of them and very determined to fulfill the role that is expected of her within the family, whether her siblings are trying to pressure her into doing that or not, while at the other hand, actually being the face of the family, being out in public, learning about the normal world, and trying to live a normal life despite the fact that she is actually in constant danger and she has very dire consequences that could happen to her. We also see the situation where when Tayo is having his really low moment and he is feeling very much like he is a burden, like she shouldn't have been with him, like the situation is his fault, like he made her pick him because otherwise he would have died, Matsumi is like, no, that is not what happened. I have wanted to have you be with me pretty much from the beginning, and I have been planning toward this the entire time. She is not some passive, docile flower who is sitting there and who is, like, taking one for the team. Oh no. As far as the situation with choosing him, she is a sniper who targeted, aimed, and fired. I also like the situation we see at the end of the episode where she clicks the heart. We're going to talk more about that in the comedy section, so I'm going to leave it brief here. But, oh my lord, it just sealed the deal for me that this is not a shrinking violet, which is refreshing. Because you shouldn't have to be somebody who can throw a 300 pound rock across the sun in order to not be seen as a shrinking violet as a woman. I think that we get this mistaken idea so often that only physical power makes you strong. And that's a load of crap. And I'm really glad to see them address that here. Okay, we're going to jump on to that comedy that I was talking about just a minute ago. And we might as well start by talking about that post that I was talking about a minute ago. Because, oh my god, it happened at the end of the episode, and when I saw it, I almost died laughing. So what happens is, in this episode, the primary situation is that there is this bomber who is trying to target Matsumi and assassinate her. And Tayo has been given the job by Kyoichiro to actually ensure her safety because he has to go on a mission. Or at least he's telling us he does. Maybe he's been watching from the shadows the whole time. We don't know. But what we do know is the fact that Tayo is trying to take care of all this stuff and everything, and the villain obviously gets stopped by the end of the episode. And he is this lunatic who is obsessed with social media, and he is basically doing their universe's version of tweeting something out as he is dying. And 
when the tweet comes through or the post or whatever the heck you want to call it, Tayo and Matsumi are actually looking at it on Tayo's phone and the guy like texts out, gonna die now. And before he can die, Matsumi actually hearts it. And I was like, that's brutal, but it was hilarious. In more lighthearted and fun humor, we had the situation where the Yosukura family's cat, Goliath, is actually the one who drives their getaway car, their limo, their vehicle, whatever you want to call it. Which is amazing, because I was all like, who is driving this vehicle? And then I thought maybe we're dealing with some tech situation where it's some kind of AI driving, but oh no, apparently their cat is like some kind of race car driving genius who is like swerving and weaving and bobbing and when he's driving, actually Kyoichiro is like, could you not make me spill my tea? Which is like, dude, you guys are being chased by like people in great big vans with guns that are firing at you and everything. You're worried about spilling your tea? Meanwhile, Tayo is like clutching his head, curling into a ball, screaming, freaking out because there are bullets flying at the vehicle and everything and he's just going nuts. And then you got the cat that's driving the vehicle. I just loved that. It warmed my heart. It was funny as hell. And it's something I hope that we'll get to see reference throughout the series because I just thought it was both too funny and too cute. The last type of humor I wanted to talk about that really cracks me up is the growing and changing dynamic between Kyoichiro and Tayo because I think that's going to be a backbone of the series and it's going to be one of the running gags that are going to be going on throughout it and I think they do a good job both at emphasizing humor for these two but also at showing slowly growing two steps forward one step back in the interactions and the respect that the two have for each other or don't. And this is shown in several really interesting ways. At the beginning of the episode, as I pointed out, there was the wake-up call, which was hilarious. And as I said, I would not be volunteering for that, even as a big Kyoichiro fan. There is the situation in the car, which was really funny, where Kyoichiro and Matsumi are both chill as cucumbers, where Tayo is just flipping the hell out, and rightfully so, because wouldn't you be flipping out if there were guns firing at the vehicle you were in? I know I would! Then there was the situation where it's actually Kyoichiro who saves Tayo when he jumps, and what he tells Tayo is that while he would love to see him fall to his death because he sees him as competition for the time and affection of his sister, which, yeah, you can squick out about that all you like, but it is what it is, and I'm just gonna take it at platonic value and play it mild. In your mind, it might be different. It's just gonna be something where we're gonna have to disagree. But the point is that while he sees Tayo as direct competition for that affection, he also recognizes the rules, and he also recognizes that Tayo jumped without hesitation. And, as a member of the Yozakura family, Kyoichiro's honor requires that he save Tayo, but he is slowly actually seeming to gain a grudging respect for at least the determination that Tayo shows in wanting to protect Matsumi, whether he currently has the skills to back it up or not. And then, of course, we see that collapse in a, in a house of cards, because we realize that since Tayo's home blew up at the start of the episode, he's gonna be moving in with the family by the end of it. And Kyoichiro is just like, no, 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 no. And Matsumi is like, I am the leader. And I say, yes. So we're gonna have them all living together going forward. And I'm sure that's going to create a bunch of comedic shenanigans and interesting interactions that will be keeping us entertained for weeks. So, what did you guys think of this episode? If you would like to share anything, feel free to put a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Anyway, that's all I had to say about this one, so I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye!